Hair loss products. There's so much advice out there. But what actually works? Today, we are categorizing hair loss ingredients into three categories. Ye, ne, and eh, based on scientific studies. Ye has strong clinical evidence, is FDA approved, or widely accepted in dermatology. Eh, there is some promising research, but not strong enough to be fully recommended. And then ne, little to no real evidence, just marketing hype. So let's start. The first ingredient that we're going to talk about is minoxidil, the OG hair growth king. FDA approved, clinically proven, and actually works. It increases blood flow to the hair follicles and extends the growth phase. Studies show 5% minoxidil outperforms 2%, but be patient. It takes three to six months to see results. Oh, and expect some initial shedding. Don't freak out. A clear yay. Finistride, the DHT blocker. DHT shrinks hair follicles. Finistride stops that from happening. Research shows 60 to 70% DHT reduction with daily use. Works best for men, but side effects like low libido can be a concern. Topical versions are now a thing to minimize risks. So a uh, yay, but yes, be careful. Redensil, is it the next gen minoxidil? It claims to stimulate stem cells in hair follicles. Some small studies show a 10% hair density boost in three months, but guess who funded them? The manufacturer. So maybe, maybe not, eh. Procapil, the herbal DHT blocker. A cocktail of flavonoids, peptides, and extracts. Marketed as a natural alternative to finasteride, but lacks large-scale clinical proof. Works better in shampoos for hair strengthening than as a regrowth solution. Ne. Rosemary oil. Is it nature's minoxidil? Let's find out. A 2015 study compared it to 2% minoxidil and found similar results after six months. Could be great for mild hair loss, but expect slower progress compared to the real deal. Eh, but almost a year. Kepexil. Will peptides work for hair? A mix of red clover extract and peptides set to reduce DHT. Sounds fancy, but most studies are in-house, not independent. Could help slow hair loss, but won't give you a full head of hair overnight. Eh. And again. Is pea sprout power enough? Extracted from pea sprouts, it supposedly activates follicle stem cells. Early data is interesting, but no major human studies yet. Might help extend the hair growth phase, but don't expect minoxidil level growth. Eh, but yeah, sort of, yay. Onion juice. Smells bad, works worse. A small 20, 2002 study showed some hair regrowth, but only in patchy hair loss. That is alopecia areata, not male pattern baldness, not female pattern baldness. Plus, you don't want to smell like an onion all day. Ne. Chili oil. Spicy, but not effective. Capsaicin increases blood flow, but no real studies prove hair regrowth. Worst case, it burns and irritates your scalp. Ne. For real results, stick with minoxidil and finasteride. If you want alternatives, redensil, procapil, and rosemary oil might help. But don't expect miracles. Onion and chili keep them in the kitchen, not for your hair care routine. Which ingredient have you tried? Let me know in the comments. Thank you.